Hey everyone and welcome back. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to use motion tracking to follow an object across the screen on Caden Live and then apply some kind of effect to that object. And there's really two main reasons you might want to do this. The first is you're trying to blur something out that's not static. So think of you're doing a vlog, you're walking through a city, there's cars driving by and you want to blur out their license plate. If you just put a static blur on the screen, as soon as that car moves, your blur is going to be blurring out a portion of the screen where the license plate no longer is. So we want to track that license plate across the screen. The second reason you might want to do this is if you're trying to call attention to something. So think of when you watch sports on TV and the announcer will put a little circle around a player that's doing something amazing so that you can easily follow that player. I'm going to show you how to do both of those things in today's video. So what I've got here is I've just got a simple clip of me moving my hands up and down on the screen. What I'm going to do, I'm going to drag and drop that onto the editing timeline. I'm then going to go to the effects tab. And what I'm going to search for here is I'm going to do M-O-T-I-O-N for motion tracker. Left click drag and drop that onto the timeline. You will see that little red square appears which lets us know we did something right but now we need to actually put in all of the different configurations to get the effect we want. One thing really quick before I move on, if you don't have this effects tab in your version of Caden Live, you can add it by going to view and then just making sure that the effects checkbox is checked. So we're already good, we're set up there. We're going to go ahead and click on the clip and it brings up our context menu. Now you're going to see a lot of different things here. It sounds like a lot, but it's really not that hard. We'll go through each one of them one at a time. But the first thing, we want to tell Caden Live what object on the screen are you trying to track. And in this example, I'm trying to track my hand. So we're going to just move that the best we can around my hand and that's letting Caden Live know what object to track. Now the first option that we have is the tracking algorithm. You can look online at the documentation and each algorithm does something a little bit better or a little bit worse depending on how you're tracking your object. Um, my best advice is just to play around and see which one works because to be honest I find they're all somewhat similar. The next thing, and in my opinion even more important than the algorithm, is the keyframe spacing. What this is doing is it's telling Caden Live how often are we updating where we're tracking. So if you have this set to something really high, and I'll show you an example later in the video, if this is too high, your blur or your outline is going to be way behind the object you're tracking. If you set this too small, there's not really a huge downside other than it's going to put a lot of processing strain on your computer and it might take forever to process. So just for this, so you can see the perfect example, we're going to cut this down to two. The frame shape we can change to an ellipse if we were trying to blur out someone's face, something like that. Uh, I guess we'll go with ellipse for this one. Now this is really important, the shape width. If you leave this shape width anything other than zero, it's going to actually appear on your final output. So this is perfect, like I said, if we're trying to highlight something, draw a circle around a sports player or something like that where we want it to appear. If we don't want it to appear on the final output, we're actually going to set that to a zero pixels. So if all we're wanting to do is just draw an outline around something and follow it around the screen, we're pretty much set. We're going to leave all the other settings as they are. We're going to click Analyze to apply effect. And what you'll see, there's a little progress bar as Caden Live is going in, doing all of these calculations, and basically putting points to move this little outline for us. Once it's complete, and I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger here so you can see it, we're going to press play. And what you can see here is that that little outline that we have is basically following our hand across the screen. So that's how you would do it if you're just wanting to highlight something. But let's suppose instead that we're trying to blur something out. Well for that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back, I'm going to reset all of my different effects. I'm going to leave everything the same. The only difference is I'm going to change the blur type 
to pixelate. Now you could change it to whatever you wanted. Um, pixelate just works pretty well. So one other thing I'll point out when we are actually trying to do a blur effect, if we don't want that little red outline, we're going to go ahead and decrease our pixels to zero. And the other thing we're going to do is we can change this slider bar for blur. So the more we go to the right, it's going to have a very pixelated blur. You won't even be able to tell this is a hand anymore. If you go all the way to the left, you can still see it's a hand, but it's just going to blur out some of the details. So uh, that's just a thing to consider. Do you want the object to be unrecognizable or do you want someone to still see that there's a hand there, but maybe you're just trying to blur out the middle finger or something like that. So just for this example, we'll give it a pretty decent pixelation. We're going to go ahead and analyze to apply the effect and then I'll show you what that looks like on the video. Alrighty, let's go ahead and play. And you can see that that blur follows our hand. And I know on this video, it is showing that red box, but just keep in mind when you do your final render, it's not actually gonna be there. Now, two troubleshooting things that I do want to demonstrate. So the first thing that I wanna show you is if we have our keyframe spacing too high, let's go up to 60 for this example. I'm going to analyze to apply the effect and what you're going to notice when I play back this video for you, our blur is going to be so far behind the hand that it's pretty much ineffective. So you can see here, the blur is way far behind. It's pretty much ineffective. And that's why you don't want to have your keyframe spacing too high. Now, another common problem that you can run into is that when you tell Caden Live what you're looking for, and you play back your clip, it doesn't actually follow the item across the entire screen. And sometimes that can happen if you set your area too big, because right now Caden Live is looking at this and it's saying, okay, I see this little portion of the hand moving, but 70% of this green is not moving. So if I have to pick between following 20% that's moving and 80% that's not, it's more accurate for me to stay on this 80%. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. We can see here that it basically stops tracking the hand. All we would have to do to fix that, we're going to go back and we're just going to dial this in to make sure that we're looking at what we actually want to look at. Again, reset, analyze to apply the effect. And then this time when we go through it again, you're going to see that it is tracking like it's supposed to. So there we go. Now we are back to tracking like we should. So that video, I just showed you two different ways of tracking objects on the screen, either to blur something out or to highlight an object. I hope you found the video useful and I'll see you in the next one.